Hey, how are you? I'm great, Lance. Thanks for sitting down and chatting with me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, totally. Yeah, man, I'm so glad the show is back. I, me too. <laughs> yeah, I thought you might, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the fact that we finished editing it and, you know, a big merger happened definitely sent me into a panic briefly, but luckily Roku came in and saved the day and the upside is now we're in so many more homes than we were in before. So hopefully a whole new batch of of uh, people will get to discover this weird little show. Right. Oh my God, that'd be great. Like what? What's the thinking? I mean, because season one was so great. So what's the thinking when coming back for season two? I mean, like you're wanting to obviously top the last season, but you want to avoid that kind of sophomore, dreaded sophomore slump. So what are you guys thinking when you come back to like the writer's room? Oh my gosh, that was, you know, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. You want to be true to the character, but you also don't want it to feel repetitive from what you've already seen in season one. So when we, you know, I, I tend to write from a very character driven place. And so when we were, breaking the season in the writer's room for season two, we just thought, okay, well, how can we make him grow even in little ways that are believable um, so that this season feels fresh and new? And we ended up uh, giving him a little bit of a love story this season, which was really fun because it kind of gave the character a chance to fixate on something outside of himself. Season one is so about like him just, you know, desperately needing to be popular. He ultimately gets that at the end of season one for all the wrong reasons. And once that comes crashing down in the beginning of season two, he has to sort of rebuild and he has to reconcile with his cultural identity in a way that you don't really get to see him do in season one. And then on top of all that, we we gave him a love interest, which just ended up being so fun to shoot. One of the things I really love about the show is like, they're kind of like these little asides that uh, you just burst out laughing. Like uh, in this new season, one was like uh, uh, the, the girlfriend, uh, or, uh, she was eating lasagna. She said, what is all this water? And like, oh, that's how they do it in uh, the, the high school <laughs> period or something like that. Just so many like little make, throw away. Yeah, yeah, things like that just make me burst laugh, laugh out loud funny. Or, or, those like really important to put to to sort of layer in for you guys because I mean that's one of the joys of the show at least for me. That's so that's so great to hear. Yeah, I mean, listen, comedy is obviously um, it it so comes down to sensibility and taste. And my specific sensibility, I feel like, has always been in the lane of nuance and. Um, not necessarily the most traditional setup punchline um, that you might see on other shows. As much as I appreciate that, I sort of like living in that negative space at times in between the lines and mining just the truth of a moment, however weird or uncomfortable it might be. And um, I think when the point of view of the character is really clear, the comedy will come. And so it was really fun to to play with that nuance and to find the idiosyncrasies of this character and to um to explore what it's like for a kid with a very simple want the desire to be popular get in his own way episode after episode and um for me as a performer too that kind of sensibility is just really fun to play you do almost everything on the show. I mean, you created it. You're you're one of the writers. Uh, you directed an episode. Uh, you're now like a co-showrunner. I actually uh, didn't direct. That's the one thing I didn't do. Oh, I saw that. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. My You might have seen my last name because my younger sister, who's an incredible writer uh, and director, she directed an episode. So well, I feel like an idiot. It was a real family affair. Yes, my dad's. But full series regular <laughs> my mom and my dog wasn't like everyone's there in this well, season all the other stuff but I mean you do I mean I'm exhausted just like thinking <laughs> about it for you but like at the end of the season were you just like just I do I just want to lay down and go to bed yeah I mean it's such an adrenaline rush to be in production but that's the kind of thing SNL really prepares you for uh, if you can survive the gauntlet of that schedule, you can sort of do anything you feel like coming out of it. So um, in comparison, everything 
tended to feel easy because we were never going to be live in an hour. You know, you have the luxury of time. And even if that time is only a day or a few hours, it still felt like an eternity compared to the instant gratification of SNL. So, so yeah, um, it was definitely a train that didn't stop, but a complete joy from beginning. And at that level, when you're wearing these different hats, you really, there's just no way to pull it off without having an incredible army of people. And I had like three brilliant little armies from the writer's room to production, to the edit of these crazy talented people that helped me pull it off. And um, obviously I couldn't have done it without them, but it was also so fun to collaborate and to get a wardrobe designer's take on the character and the DP's take on the character. And we all kind of were this family that came together to bring this weird little vision to life. <laughs> uh, speaking of like wardrobe, I'm an actor too. So I'm just fascinated by this. Uh, did you already have like the voice and sort of the, the, the way it's the, the, like the way he talks in your head, floating around in your head, or uh, once you had like the, 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 the costume and the makeup and hair, did it come from that? I mean, I'm just kind of curious how it sort of that evolved. Yeah. I think once I, cracked the character in terms of what I thought it could be before embodying him, I started to just, for my own sake, improvise and find it from just playing around with it. This is obviously before any hair and makeup test or any wig was designed. Um, so it started from me just kind of improvising and playing around. And then once it was up on its feet in a more professional capacity with these brilliant, you know, people that came on to design his eyebrows and his wig and figure out what kind of clothes he wears. What, how can we most sell me as a 14 year old boy so that audiences are willing to suspend their disbelief enough to hopefully even just forget that a grown woman is playing him and take in the ridiculousness of it. Those components coming together really landed the plane and made it so much easier to, like once I saw him, it was like, oh, I know what this is. Um, it felt like it was less in, in the exploratory phase of when I first, you know, was trying to crack the character. So it was a real evolution and it really, yeah, the, the physical components for sure helped define the character as a performer. So like, like if you were like walking on set and like you weren't in costume or anything right now, could you just immediately get back in it or does it immediately help like when you, have everything on you know so yeah i i think you i can sell it more when i have everything on but there are times in my own life where i'll say something and my friends will be like oh my gosh that was yeah. such a chad <laughs> moment and um at the end of the day there's so much of him in me how can there not be um uh, and i think you, you said it yourself like you immediately like, forget that a grown woman is playing this character and like they, it's just you are just so fantastic you know? oh. Thank you so much. That was certainly the hope for no reason other than, you know, yes, there's this conceit at the center of the show and this, you know, this, uh, this hook, but the show isn't about that hook. The show is simply a show about, it's a coming of age story about a 14 year old boy trying to navigate his high school experience. And so, you know, hopefully because, you know, there's an adult playing that character, you could push the comedy further. And there's like a, a, a bit of a wink in that sense. But the goal was not to a trick people into thinking I'm a, a little boy necessarily, or even to, you know, keep hitting that. It was really to disappear into the character and play it as earnestly as I could. Yeah. Well, that's my time. Thank you so much for uh, chatting with me. And I, I hope it does fantastically and uh, we get a season three. Thank you so much. It's so fun to be able to speak to another actor about oh, it. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope uh, I talk to you again soon. Thank you so much. Thanks.